So I'm going to continue with the takedown of the uh, 49 state attorney general sellout agreement, the sellout of the American people to the banks. Now, when you look at things on the internet and you're paying attention to websites, it's important that you test the veracity of the statements made and the information that people are uh, describing to you against facts. So important facts that I want everyone to pay attention to, and I think every American needs to go to the National Mortgage Settlement website and print up the copy of the complaint that I'm holding here in my hand, which is the work product of attorneys general from 49 different states. I think everyone needs to print this thing out and read it because it's very clear language and it's frankly responsibility of taxpayers to understand exactly what's happening here. Now, I don't understand how any attorney general can sign on to this thing or frankly, I don't understand how any of our legislators can allow this to go through when you read it and understand exactly what's happening here. Now, I also want to criticize all of the reporters who did all the reporting on the magic 49 state attorney general $25 billion settlement because frankly there was so much that's misleading about the headlines in all of the newspapers there are information about the settlement that no one has reported on yet and it's frankly the the meat and potatoes the full substance of this report you know when you look at the headlines and you look at the press conference what everyone was talking about was the 49 uh, attorney general sellout out was to settle robo signing issues. Well folks, the robo signing was just a distraction. That's not what this settlement was about at all. The settlement is about the fact that the banks defrauded the federal government, you and I as taxpayers, to the tune of billions of dollars. Let me make that very clear. The, the 49 state attorney general sellout is not about robo signing. It's about the fact that that the lenders defrauded taxpayers out of billions of dollars. So let's just take a look at the complaint. We're going to take first the complaint, which is found at the National Mortgage Settlement. Just Google that. And then we're going to look at the Inspector General reports, which uh, form a complement to what's happened in the complaint. Well, the, the beginning at page 14, it describes the various federal programs that are at play among the various servicers. We've got the Federal Housing Administration, the Department of Agriculture's Rural, uh, Rural Housing Ser uh, Service Guarantee Program. We've got the Department of Veterans Affairs. These are the primary uh, vehicles through which uh, federal taxpayer dollars are paid to the banks and institutions for the privilege of taking your money. Keep that in mind. The next uh, uh, party that they indicate in here is the United States Trustees Program. Now, these are attorneys and officials of the Federal Bankruptcy Court that are charged with reviewing uh, complaints and reviewing the conduct of attorneys that are submitted in bankruptcy pleadings. There's a nice little overview of the single family, uh, family mortgage industry. It talks about how you know, we got to go support loans being made in communities, and the way that we support loans being made in communities for homes is through the uh, programs that I just mentioned earlier. Next, when we get to page 18, it describes the crisis that we entered into in 2008, and then it details some of the programs that your federal government put together, cobbled together, to try and um, stabilize what was happening in 2008. Um, it, it talks about HAMP and HAFA, and the Making Homes Affordable Program, and Principal Reduction Payments, and um, Home Affordable Foreclosure Alternative Programs. These were all of the programs that we heard about year after year since this crisis began. And every time there would be some press release and some movement about how this was going to save the market. But all of those programs were just about funneling more money to the banks and institutions. And you and I know that we saw precious little... Um, help that actually made it to consumers from those programs. Yet each of those programs cost taxpayers billions of dollars and did precious little for the taxpayer. All right, getting into page 21, the bank servicing this conduct. This uh, complaint lays the groundwork and, and lays out all of, well, most of the misconduct, beginning with originating the loans. Let's talk about how that begins. The banks, and in this case, City and Wells Bank of America and J.P. Morgan, um, are what we call uh, direct endorsement lenders. What this means is the banks uh, go out into the marketplace and compete 
it, using, in effect, the full faith and credit of the United States government and all of our taxpayers as a direct endorsement lender, what they are doing is going out there and making loans. And what's supposed to happen is as a condition of being a direct endorsement lender, the banks are supposed to only originate loans that, that have a very high quality, USDA, grade A loans, with uh, borrower's credit worthiness uh, confirmed and the value of the property confirmed and the ability of that homeowner to make that loan confirmed. But what is described is that they, uh, they failed to use the FHA gun underwriting programs that would have confirmed those loans. The fact of the matter is that they were not confirming the value of those loans. They were not making loans that were in conformance with those very strict FHA guidelines. What FHA was supposed to do was to review each loans that were being originated by these servicers. And if the servicers weren't following those very strict FHA guidelines, they were supposed to yank their uh, direct endorsement procedure uh, status. But they didn't. That's because of the corruption that exists in the interplay between these banks and institutions of federal government. The second part of it is getting into the, the servicing component. Again, at the origination side, they were supposed to be following very strict guidelines. They were not. And we get into the servicing. When they're collecting the payments after the loan is originating, they were supposed to be following very strict guidelines. They absolutely were not. Once a loan goes into default under the FHA guidelines, the banks and institutions were supposed to be engaging in very specific loss mitigation uh, and modification processes, and they absolutely were not. That's at page 23. Um, you and I know that as we were trying to modify these loans through HAMP and HAFA and everything else, we would get papers lost again and again and again. And what this complaint details is that that was systemic across the board. They were flushing papers down the toilet and not doing what they were supposed to do. Then once loans were not being... Uh, originated properly, they weren't being modified properly, they weren't being serviced properly, they would file foreclosure. And then on page 26, we have the detail of wrongful conduct related to foreclosures. And that's something that's obviously very in, in, important to me and intimately familiar with, or rather lying in pleadings that were filed in foreclosure. Um, the next thing is that the... Um, uh, pleadings that were filed in bankruptcy court. Um, the complaint details that they were lying to the bankruptcy trustees. Um, page 28 describes in detail the direct endorsement program. And again, uh, direct endorsement lenders, as a condition of having that full faith and credit of the United States government, were supposed to be following very strict guidelines. They absolutely were not. Um, but the fact of the matter is that your federal government, FHA, was supposed to be carefully analyzing these loans, and if the lenders weren't performing properly, they were supposed to yank their endorsement. They absolutely were not. And in the same way that uh, Standard and Poor's and Moody's and all these weren't properly um, ranking the loans in the mortgage portfolios, FHA was not properly reviewing the individual loans that were coming in and that got the stamp of approval uh, of, of the FHA. They were not, in fact, engaging in good due diligence. And so at page 31, it describes what happens here. And it says that in exchange for having the authority to originate and underwrite FHA loans, Countrywide was obligated to determine whether prospective borrowers met minimum credit worthiness uh, requirements. They did not. Uh, and it says that during the period 2003 to 2009, Countrywide did not qualify these people. What we know happened was Countrywide was in their fury to originate loans was throwing the, wind, the, the, the requirements out the window and originating absolutely anything. And it says, as a result, FHA has thus far incurred hundreds of millions of dollars in damages with respect to claims paid for countrywide loans knowingly made to unqualified borrowers. Additionally, thousands of the countrywide loans are currently in default and have yet to be submitted to FHA for claims. So what's going to happen is, all those countrywide loans that were fraudulently originated We've paid hundreds of millions of dollars for already, and it's indicating right in here we know that there are hundreds of thousands of additional ones that are in the pipeline, and they're going to be submitted for FHA claims that you and I as taxpayers are going to make. They did not comply with the quality control underwriting guidelines. That gets into page 30s and 33 and, and all of this, but the 
the clear point about it is that we're acknowledging that none of these lenders that get hundreds of millions and frankly and probably billions of dollars of taxpayer money as a result of being FHA direct endorsement lenders were following any guidelines. This was an orgy of money, taxpayer dollars, where they're originating these loans, making money off consumers, and then submitting these documents to the federal government to make even more money, and nobody's watching the storehouse. We get into page 34, it's something that just absolutely blows my mind. The bank's bankruptcy-related misconduct. They're able to uh, submit false claims in bankruptcy court, fraudulent documents, fraudulent proof of claims, fraudulent assignments of mortgage, and it's detailed in here in page 35. Filing proofs of claim or other documents where they sought payments from bankruptcy that they were not entitled to collect. Filing proofs of claim without proper authorization for amounts that were spent that weren't spent. I can't understand how it is that they were permitted to routinely file false claims in bankruptcy court and yet they get away with it. At page 38, it details that there was a systemic pattern and practice of violating the Service Member Civil Relief Act. When soldiers go to serve our country, they're entitled to protection. It's incorporated in the Service Member Civil Relief Act, and the banks and institutions were routinely not doing it. And so are they going to pay real penalties for that? No, nothing near what they should be. We get into page 39 and the actual counts where, as a result of all the conduct that I just went in detail down there, um, they, the, they're they making a finding that, in fact, the banks were engaging in, in uh, improper conduct. But here we get to the real substance of it, the meat and potatoes. You know, all the headlines reported on the $25 billion settlement, and all they talked about was that this was a, a resolution of the robo-signing claims. The President of the United States of America and all the big federal officials stand up there and they have their press conference and they talk about this watershed moment. What they ignore is beginning at page 41, and I really encourage you to read carefully what this is. Violation of the False Claims Act. By virtue of the acts described above, the banks knowingly presented or caused to be presented to the United States false or fraudulent claims for payment or approval, including but not limited to improper claims of payment to FHA residential mortgage insurance. Here's the deal, folks. When the loans went bad, because of the wrongful conduct that the banks engaged in to originate the loans, they then submit pay, uh, claims to the FHA and they get paid for making those bad loans. Isn't that a wonderful racket? They originate bad loans, they service them badly, they modify them badly, they foreclose on them badly. When I say badly, I mean fraudulently, improperly, illegally. And then their reward for doing all of that at each step is they submit a claim to the FHA and they get paid for it. And what this false claims component is, they collect billions of dollars in what false a false claims act claim is that if you find out that a federal program has improperly paid money to a private party um, you, the federal government has the ability to go and claw back some of that money now of the billions of dollars that they paid out how much of it was um, is getting returned now as virtue of this 25 billion dollar uh, settlement virtually none that's the problem here there's other counts that, that other violations of federal programs, but the fact of the matter is that False Claims Act really is the biggie. Now, getting down in here into the other claims that they could be making and into the prayer for relief, you'll note that um, under these counts, the defendants could be liable for triple damages and civil penalties between $5,500 and $11,000 for each violation. Or in count five, they could be liable for a civil penalty of up to a million dollars for each violation. Now, how can we agree to a settlement when there's a potential for violations at each penalty, or penalties for each violation, when we haven't engaged in a thorough review of all of the com uh, complaints and all of the potential violations here? We just didn't. We took shortcuts and agreed to a settlement here that's just absurd. I, I, and the next thing, and you have to see where these pieces line up, the Attorney General Settlement Agreement is a description of all of the potential claims in detail. That's a, a key point. 
The next thing is where some of the information came from that, that they rely on in basing the settlement. For that, you have to look at the uh, Office of Inspector General of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And that was released on March 12th. I really encourage you to, to look carefully at the complaint uh, that is released here, the audit reports. Let's, let's look first at one submitted for city mortgage. It shows on page two, during fiscal years 2009 and 2010, city mortgage submitted 19,189 FHA claims totaling $2.4 billion. During that very short period of time, city mortgage, who originated bad loans, serviced bad loans, modified bad loans, then foreclosed on bad loans, submitted an invoice to the federal government to say, pay us $2.4 billion. Kind of makes that $25 billion uh, look like a small figure when you put that in context, right? Getting into page three. The thing that I can't understand is that this OIG audit and report identified and reviewed a sample of 28 conveyance city mortgage FHA claims. This is absurd. We're talking about $25 billion here. And in this report, all they can bother to review is 28 claims. Now, here's a, a key point here that's uh, really one of the apocalyptic portions of this whole situation in foreclosure. When the, the, the servicer makes a claim to uh, the FHA, as a condition of getting that money, what the servicer is supposed to provide back to uh, the FHA is marketable title. Now, one of the things that I've been obsessed over recently is the fact that in Pinellas County, there were a total of 3,000 foreclosure auctions in 2011, and in only 436 of those cases did title pass to a third party. I couldn't understand why it is that, you know, 87% or so of the foreclosures that work through our court system ultimately make their way back to the uh, plaintiff that's foreclosing instead of going out on the market. I think that the truth is, the reality is, the reason the case is that uh, they that they take that property back, they make an FHA claim, and they get paid for that. But it gets even deeper than that. As indicated in this report, what FHA is saying is that the servicer failed to convey marketable title to that property now. So now you and I are sitting on a dog of a property that can't be conveyed because the servicer, uh, throughout the entire process, engaged in false and, in, in many times, criminal conduct. Again, review the OIG reports. It glosses over the uh, fact that these notary violations that they engaged in are crimes. Um, but it, it just blows my mind that in this report we're talking about a sample size of 28 claims when on the very preceding page we're talking about $2.4 billion worth of claims that they are, are processing. So, you know... The thing that really strikes me about these audit reports is at page four, in order to come up with this universe of information, the FHA and the OIG uh, only reviewed, we initiated our review on October 15, 2010, and performed on-site work at City Mortgage's office in O'Fallon, Missouri, between October and 2010. So for $2.4 billion claims that were submitted, we could only bother to have a little review that occurred between October and December 2010. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it indicates on page 5 that City Mortgage used a flawed process to submit FHA conveyance claims for judicially foreclosed upon properties during the review period and, and received FHA claim payments of nearly $597 million. Now, 2.4 billion that they submit and they get claims of 5.97 billion. Does that mean that those other claims were rejected? I don't know, but but all of these OIG reports are staggering. It's shocking to me in so many ways. But I think what I find most disturbing is the fact that apparently the banks and institutions uh, fought these OIG investigations pretty significantly. And so reference throughout this is that the Office of Inspector General, the big scary logo on there, the Inspector General, the Department of Justice, apparently the banks and institutions were able to tell these big agencies, go screw yourselves, we're not going to provide you the information you need, because throughout this, it indicates that they aren't making uh, employees available for deposition, they weren't providing documents that were necessary, they apparently were fighting subpoenas and other formal legal processes 
that should have been used to collect this information. The fight over foreclosures is not about the homeowners that are living in these homes anymore. It's not about guys like me walking into foreclosure court defending these homeowners. The fight is about the uh, large-scale and systemic fraud that's been engaged in by these large lenders and servicers and in the complicity of our federal government in doing that. We're, take, we're not talking about little $100,000 loans for homeowners. We're talking about billions of dollars that is exchanging hands between the federal government and the servicers over and over again. This entire settlement is a farce. This should be the starting point for opening up the entire ugly Pandora's box that is the financial system and the mortgage system and our legal system in this country. The government is not out there protecting the citizens and taxpayers anymore. It's protecting the banks and institutions and throwing billions of dollars, trillions of dollars of taxpayer money at these institutions. Get these documents, read them, and start talking about them for crying out loud.